I swear I work on these projects, they just take a little while to complete. Okay, it's been about a year and a half. I figure I should give an update on my custom trains for Connects coasters. Well, that's all that's left. And well, I got these parts, but uh, these don't have bearings anymore. These are obsolete, these are trash, okay? They can join the Connects trains in the garbage pile. This is what we're working with today. If you're new here, then let me introduce you to my custom model roller coaster trains. This is the Wildcat 5, or at least it was. This is a custom train for model roller coasters with a 1.84 inch track gauge and a quarter inch diameter rail, which includes the Screaming Serpent style of Connects track. To recap my last video about these trains, I was frustrated when building my custom layouts with how limiting the stock trains for these Kinect kits are. They have a high rolling resistance, there's a single chain dog on the front of the train, and they can't take tighter turns around the track. Talented builders can definitely work around these issues, but I found them way too limiting for what I wanted to build. When I finished my first big coaster project for this channel, I immediately dove into the project of creating my own trains to fix these issues. There exists a solution that swaps the stock wheels with ball bearings, and to be clear, it is very helpful, but that just swaps the awful axles with another set that are better, but still can't turn. That definitely improves the rolling resistance, but I still can't make a tight turn with these trains. So that led me to this design. This is the Wildcat 5, which was the first iteration which was reliable enough to show off to the world. This train can take a turn as tight as a wild mouse, has chain dogs on every single car, and swaps the plastic rollers with smooth ball bearings. These trains were way more popular online than I had expected. At the time of recording this, I have a little over 800 subscribers, but that video has over 75,000 views. It's clear I'm not the only one with these frustrations. I used these trains for over a year in my other projects. I built a magnetic braking system for them, created a custom track to use with them, and nearly finished a complete roller coaster design specifically for them. As for that last bit, I ended up moving and the connect structure didn't take the move so well and I had to cancel the project. But that was probably for the best because it let me dive back into designing the next iteration of these trains. So if the Wildcat 5 fixes all these issues, why did I go ahead and spend all the time and money to design the Wildcat 6? I mean, for one thing, the Wildcat 6 looks way cooler than the Wildcat 5 does, but uh, that's unrelated. The main reason is this has this dirty little design flaw that actually makes it way worse than the Kinex trains. Yeah. Simply put, they are not reliable in the slightest. Several factors contribute to a massive problem I call bogey lock. Bogey lock is an issue that causes a train to abruptly stop while in motion. It first appeared doing some testing after I released my video of the trains, and this issue really stumped me for a while. It continued to creep its way into my next project, which was creating the magnetic brakes. But it wouldn't be until nearly six months after I started that when I determined the cause of it. We'll come back to that later when I show you how I fixed it. Beyond the reliability issues with the bogies, several parts were way too small and would easily break. That's partially what inspired me to do the magnetic braking project. Every time it would complete a test run, the trains would fall off the track and break. The main culprits were these tiny little printed parts for the couplers. This was the second biggest issue that needed to be fixed. My new train has been completely redesigned from the bogies to the body to be more reliable, durable, and easier to print than its predecessor. Every single part has been redesigned to address the bogey lock issue and to be able to withstand sudden stops and fast acceleration. Funny enough, the bearings and some of the screws are the only parts that were reused. 
Everything else is brand new specifically for this train. What about those aforementioned issues? How did I fix those in the Wildcat 6? Well, to begin with, I have significantly more experience, both personally and professionally, designing parts for 3D printing. The parts for the Wildcat 5 were not properly optimized. This was one of my first big 3D printed projects and I really didn't have the experience to design the parts properly. The parts I was creating were just plain ugly. Printing them in black PLA allowed me to hide my shame, but it always bothered me. Beyond creating some overall ugly parts, this also contributed to creating weak and fragile parts that caused some of my issues. To also help with the quality of these parts, I moved on from my small fleet of Ender 3s. I purchased a Prusa i3 Mark IV and the quality jump of my parts is seriously way higher than I expected. I went from printing garbage that went straight into the trash to printing functional and good looking parts. I could talk about this printer for an hour, but this isn't model printers, so let's switch and talk about bogey lock. Bogey lock is when the bogey over rotates so that it pinches the track. It starts by a bogey rotating just a little bit too far forward, then the momentum of the train pushes the bogeys all the way into its locking position. That's an oversimplified explanation, and the cause is an inconsistent track gauge. Track gauge refers to the distance between the rails, and for the Wildcat 5, they need an extremely consistent track gauge. Any deviation below, and that was an invitation for the bogeys to lock up and make me sad. Connect's track is not rigid, so it was extremely common to happen on a Connect's coaster, but it never happened at the same spot because every cycle would slightly shift the rails a little bit. Another contributing factor was the mechanical linkages and the axle bogies are just not rigid in the slightest. There are several small linkages that I thought would help with the flexibility of the train, but ended up contributing to the bogey lock issue. These linkages needed a fairly tight tolerance that my Ender 3 was just not capable of upholding. Also, these parts are small and printed such that the force would be applied in the weakest orientation, causing the axles to shear off. So, to summarize, inaccurately made parts designed with tight tolerances that ended up not being rigid enough gave me a fragile and floppy train that would randomly lock up. Let's now discuss the design changes to fix bogey lock and my durability issues. To start, every single part was designed with 3D printing in mind. There are no more parts built with small curvature in the Z direction, no small parts with shearing force along the layer lines, and I've even designed a couple parts to take advantage of parts being stronger in the X and Y axis. This gives me overall stronger and way cleaner parts. I've also managed to simplify and reduce the number of linkages in the bogies and axles. Between the more rigid parts, tighter tolerances, more accurate parts off the Mark IV, and simplifying the designs, I've completely managed to stamp out bogey lock. And to make sure it's a thing of the past, I've designed in a rotation stop to prevent the bogies from over rotating. Not only do these three designs make the train more reliable, but also makes them way more sturdy. I've launched them, dropped them, and let them roll off RCT style, and so far I've had a single part break. There are no more tiny parts that experience cyclic shearing loads. Shearing my bogies off like I did on the Wildcat 5 is a thing of the past. I also built in a couple of additional bonus features. I can choose to use a small rubber band on the chain dogs if I needed to. It's not a necessary feature and it can run without it, but it gives me more options. I also made it so I could use the Kinex body to save myself a little bit of printing time, and using the Kinex body I can actually hide some fishing weights in there to give myself a little bit more momentum. This was a small project compared to some I've done in the past, but I think it'll have the most impact on my future projects. Frankly, this is an upgrade I should have done months ago. Going forward, I plan on using this train design for my projects. 
And for the next project, I think I'm gonna do something that I could definitely not do with the Wildcat 5. I'm going to build a pneumatic launch and try to push the Wildcat 6 design to its absolute limit. If that interests you, then go ahead and get subscribed, and I should start posting some videos on that here pretty soon. If you enjoyed this update, then please let me know in the comments below. If you had any fun ideas for things to do with these trains, then please let me know in the comments as well. I'd love to hear your ideas. Maybe a spinning inverted coaster or something like that? I don't know. Thank you very much for the support on these projects, and I'll see you all in the next one. I think this is load-bearing packing tape. Oh no, they painted right over it. Oh, there's bugs back there. Oh, I shouldn't have done that.